God and not man is the Logos, the author of law, the one who spoke the law into existence at the creation of the universe, because natural law is the boundary conditions of the, the manifested reality called the physical universe. These are the boundary conditions which govern it. Humanity's work is to learn to listen to God's word, not man's word, not man's law, natural law, spiritual law, moral law, God's law, karmic law. I don't care what you want to call it. Call it whatever you want, okay? Consequentialism. This is the truth. That's what, you want to talk about what all these phrases really mean? It all comes back to the word truth. That's it. It's the truth about what is, what's operating here. And humanity needs to align its behavior to this law, God's law, natural law. Without alignment of its behavior, don't expect to, to natural law, don't expect a thing to change here. Expect it to rapidly grow worse. Humanity must make a cosmic apology by giving the word, okay, which means the authorship of creating law. See, we think we're the authors, we're the authorities. That's what author means, right? Author. What's another word for author? This is just a, a quick, this is how mind control through words works, right? An author is a what? A writer. Well, what are you saying there? An author who has authority, they are authoring something, is a writer. They are a write, R-I-G-H-T dash E-R. Okay? They are trying, making it into a write. This is what you hear when you hear the word authority. You hear author? which means a writer, meaning one who makes rights, which means someone who believes they're God. That's all this really comes down to. In a nutshell, we're up against a class of people who believe that they can be God and own and rule everybody else. That's, that's all the dark occult comes down to, folks. People who believe they're God, sick, psychopathic lunatics who think they're God and are going to rule the hell of the prison world that they're going to create, that they call their dark new world order. We need to give the word back. That's what an apology is. And who it needs to be given back to is the creator of the universe, because that's the author of the law. That's its rightful owner. The word doesn't belong to us, folks. The word belongs to God. That's why it says at the beginning of the biblical text, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. You know, that's what the Logos is. Natural law. God is law. You want the best definition I could ever give you for the word God? Law. People don't want to look at it like that. Very few people ever look at it like that. That's what the force of creation is. It's natural law. It's how we create, co-create our reality, whether we do it consciously or unconsciously. This apology is accomplished when we open our minds and hearts to truth and we start saying the lost word, no, to evil, to the presence of evil in our lives. See, th this is a, an initiate inside what was known as the, the Jed or the Dejed pillars, depending on how certain people pronounce it. And these Jed pillars represented stability and enlightenment. And they represent the two principles, the sacred feminine principle of non-aggression and the sacred masculine principle of self-defense. The initiate is the, is the enlightened one who is, who is incorporated and bridged both pillars and has come to the place of cosmic illumination, which is represented by the uh, winged disc of Ma'at in the Kamishan tradition, which is over the lintel between the two pillars. That winged disc of Ma'at. Ma'at was considered a great mother goddess in the Kamishan, the, the ancient Egyptian traditions. Okay? She was the force. She, she, she was a personified deity. You know, the ancient Commissions didn't actually worship a physical woman. It's not what this was. It was the personification of truth and justice and order and natural law that was encapsulated as the sacred feminine essence. And she was above all the other deities in the, in the pantheon of Egyptian deities, of Commission deities. Maat, there was no, no, god, no god, god or goddess higher. And how they looked at alignment with Maat 
is if you wanted to have order and you wanted to avoid chaos, you learned the teachings of Ma'at because she was the goddess of justice and she was the goddess of righteousness. She was the goddess that brought order if you aligned herself, if you aligned yourself to her teachings and her teachings were natural law. I started this presentation with the slide before we begin. Now we have begun and it's up to you to take it further. You know, what you'll do with this knowledge is entirely up to you. See, this is a painting by Alex Gray that shows the worldview schism. Are we going to stay embedded in the left brain and in other forms of imbalance and we're going to create the negative worldview, right? Or are we going to live in harmony with natural law, which can create this path when we incorporate the creative and nurturing and sacred feminine aspect of our beings. Natural law, living in harmony with it, can only lead to these conditions. Freedom, peace, prosperity, the continuation of our species, our actual physical survival, and our evolutionary progress in consciousness. That's what living in harmony with natural law leads to. Conversely, living in opposition to natural law will get us this side of the world tree. It'll bring this world, this hellish world of chaos and destruction. Because living in opposition to natural law can only lead to these states. Control, enslavement, war, chaos, evolutionary stagnation, and ultimately the extinction of our species. Which will we choose? You know, that's still up in the air. I can't tell you that. Only each individual can make that decision for themselves, and then that will play out in the aggregate, in the mass consciousness, the numbers. Thomas Jefferson said, a free people claim their rights as derived from the laws of nature. And this was also embedded in the Declaration of Independence. The laws of nature and of nature's God. And not as the gift of their magistrates. John Locke said, the natural liberty of man is to be free from any superior power on earth and not to be under the will or legislative authority of man, but only to have the law of nature for his rule. Former Grand Master of the Order of the Rose Cross, the Rosicrucian tradition, Francis Bacon said, nature to be commanded must first be obeyed. If we want the forces of the cosmos on our side, we have to learn and adhere to the principles of natural law. If we do not align our behavior to that, nature will not stand with us. It will continuously stand against us, and it will itself create more strife and suffering in our lives. And we certainly won't command it. We won't command its forces like with things like free energy used for any positive purpose. It'll only be used for destructive purposes. The uh, psychologist Alfred Adler said, there is a law that man should love his neighbor as himself. And he's referring, of course, here to the golden rule. In a few hundred years, it should be as natural to mankind as breathing or the upright gait. But if he does not learn it, he must perish. And you know, folks, I would really hope this is going to take less than a few hundred years. But based on where we're at, I'm not so sure. You know? I think we could do it a lot faster than that if we accept the key that's been shown here today that, as I said before, has the power to unlock all the locks on all the doors to all the cages. And that's what the knowledge of natural law comprises. Will we make the choice to climb the ladder of consciousness through an act of our own free will choice and effort it's not a diff it's not a simple climb i mean it, it's a difficult climb uh, it, it's not overly complicated to learn these concepts to learn these truths it involves abandoning many things that we've already been conditioned with that don't serve who we are okay but i'm not telling you it's going to be easy all right it involves a lot of deep introspective work but if we do it, we can step out of the prison that we've imposed upon ourselves by balancing the sacred feminine and masculine forces within each one of us. 
and by recognizing our own inherent sovereignty and that there is no legitimacy and never has been any legitimacy to slavery and control and the external rulership of human beings as subjects. Okay? That recognition of sovereignty has to go hand in hand with our knowledge of natural law. It's a totally integrated component of it. This was the title slide. This card, this tarot card was on the title slide. When you understand, and I've talked about this in some of my work online, when you understand the deep connection to the tarot tradition and other mystery tradition teachings, specifically its very deep interwoven relationship to the Kabbalistic tradition of the Middle Eastern uh, mystery traditions, all right? You understand that this card right here actually represents the will of creation and what creation itself, what the, the mind of the universe itself ultimately wants to manifest in physical reality. Not in some other worldly dream world or fantasy realm or, or spiritual reality that is to come or not come. Right here in the physical domain, which is not separate and distinct from the spiritual domain, they are one and the same. This card is known as the justice card, okay? And it's based on the Latin word jus, which means right or law, okay? That's where we get the English word justice. This card represents balance between the pillars, as you see on the right side of the king, holding the sword of truth in hand, and the scales of truth and justice have been perfectly balanced and are in the other hand. And it represents sovereignty. And it represents alignment with natural law. And most of all, it represents alignment with truth and the manifestation of order. That can only happen when we align our behaviors to the principles of natural law. Only then will we see the manifestation that the universe is itself wishing for us and trying to help us create, which is justice and order. If we let go of the things that are holding us back and break our mental chains of bondage, we can create a world that is based in actual real freedom. It is possible. I'm not telling you it's not going to be arduous work or a difficult journey, but it can be done. Okay? If we choose to do that, we're going to see advances and cr things that are going to be created that it, the world is going to look so drastically different if we go down that middle path to the truth and to order and to justice through the understanding of natural law and actually applying it and living it in our lives, that the changes we're going to experience are going to be so positive and so transformative that we're going, we can scarcely even imagine what the world will be like on the other side of that work, of, on the other side of that transformation. Will that be done? Maybe. Maybe not. The answer will come from what you see in the reflection of that device right there. That's what will determine it. Nothing else. It's up to each individual. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your kind attention today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Finally, this right here, Lex Rex, simply means the law is king. The law is king. Lex Rex.